Okay, so we're going to have a look at a few questions to do with the radius of convergence and uh, intervals of convergence. So here's the first question. The exponential series is given by e to the power x of the sum from n to infinity of x to the n all over n factorial. And we need to find the set of values for x for which the series is convergent. Okay, so for these sorts of questions, uh, we need to be basically uh, using the ratio test. So we use this idea here, the, the limit for n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 all over a n, and the absolute value of that. If that is less than 1, then we have the sum to infinity of um, that series being absolutely convergent. And then we have these two situations here. Um, in particular, when, n, when, it, when the limit is equal to 1, we, we have an inconclusive result. Uh, we also need to use the, the ideas on the p-series. So we, we see that when p is greater than 1, this series converges, and equally it diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. We could possibly use the geometric series at some point as well. We need to know that the sum to infinity, uh, that's going to be converging if, if the absolute value of r is less than 1. OK, so back to our question. Uh, find the set of values of x for which the series is convergent. OK, so just, again, state what we're trying to find. We, we want to show, well, basically, we want to show that when the, the limit of n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n is less than 1, then we're going to show that it's absolutely convergent and hence convergent. OK, so I just put the values in for this. So I replace n with n plus 1. So I get x to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial divided by x to the n over n factorial and the absolute value of that. And then I want the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so if I, if I simplify this fraction, I'm going to end up with this thing here. So I just flip the fraction and times. And hopefully you can see that I've got an x n plus 1 on the top and an x n on the bottom. And so therefore I'm going to be able to cancel this down quite a lot. I've also used the fact that n plus 1 factorial is the same as n plus 1 times by n factorial. So this thing is the same as n plus 1 times n factorial and then the n factorials will cancel out. So all that's left is this thing here. So the limit of n approaches infinity of x over n plus 1. Okay, so it's looking a bit easier. Um, and basically, well, I just kind of see what happens. Well, as n approaches infinity, then this is going to become ever closer to infinity. So for every single value, of any value of x that I choose, as n approaches infinity, this, this will still approach 0. So therefore, my limit as n approaches infinity is going to be less than 1 for every single value of x. Okay, therefore, it's absolutely convergent, and therefore convergent for all values of x. Oh, I can write it as x belongs to the real numbers. Okay, so there we go. That's the first part of the question. Um, actually, this is a new question. So find the interval of convergence of the infinite series, and then they've given me uh, a series here. Okay, for this question here, they've not written it in, in that usual form with a summation, so we kind of have to do that extra step um, and actually work out what the kind of the un term the UN term is for this. So here we go. Uh, again, I've just stated what we want to try and find. We want to show that uh, n plus 1 over a n, and the limit of that is going to be less than 1. So first off, this is my un. So I notice that I'm going to have an x plus 2 to the power n, and this is given by 3 to the n times by n. So this gives me this, uh, this kind of sequence progression here. Okay, so... Once I've got it looking like this, and I'm basically looking at the sum, the sum to infinity of, of this uh, sequence here. Okay, so it, it still fits in this pattern. Okay, so I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to look at the n plus 1 all over the, the n, nth term. So I replace this with n plus 1. So n is n plus 1. 3n goes to 3n plus 1 times by n plus 1. So this is the n plus 1th term. And I divide it by uh, the nth term, which I've just written down there. And as before, limit as n approaches infinity. So, again, same as last question. Just uh, flip and multiply. So I end up with this, this fraction here. And then same as before, I'm going to basically be able to uh, 
kind of cancel down a lot of these things here. I've got a 3n plus 1 and a 3n here. A lot of these things are going to cancel down. Okay, so let's see if I can cancel it. So I will end up with, well, x plus 2 to the n plus 1 is the same as x plus 2 to the power n times by x plus 2. So they cancel out to give me just x plus 2. And equally, I've used this fact here, 3 to the n plus 1 is equal to 3 times by 3 to the n. So again, the 3 n's cancel out, and I just end up with, with this thing here. Okay, and then, same as before. Now, uh, this particular question, uh, the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, this, be careful on this. I'm not doing x approaches infinity. I'm doing n approaches infinity. And I notice that I'm going to have an infinity on the top and also an infinity on the bottom. Therefore, I can actually use L'Hopital's rule, but with respect to n. So I'm going to differentiate with respect to n, not with respect to x. And I've got that infinity over infinity situation. And so if I do that, so if I differentiate with respect to n, I'm going to get an x plus 2 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. And therefore, well, as n approaches infinity, then well, what happens, I just, I just get this thing here, the x plus 2 and the 3. I should really have the absolute values here. Uh, I've written them in here for the actual answer. So as n approaches infinity, this itself is my limit. Okay, this is what happens. So x plus 2 over 3. Okay, and then again, if you just kind of restate, so this is my limit, and I want my limit to be less than 1. So when, when this, this answer here is less than 1, then I'm going to have a convergent uh, series. So I just write this down, and then all I need to do is actually solve this uh, inequality. So yeah, I can write it like this. So first off, just take out the modulus sign and just rearrange it so I get x is less than 1. Or, again, I just replace the modulus sign with a negative and then solve this one, and I get x greater than negative 5. So I have two possible solutions. When x is less than 1, and when x is greater than negative 5. Okay. And again, you can kind of put these values in, uh, check that this actually does work. Okay, so when x is between these two values here, I'm going to get a convergent, a convergent series. Okay, the next thing I need to do is to actually test the boundaries at x equals minus 5 and x equals 1. The reason I need to do this is because at these two values, the ratio test is going to be inconclusive. I'm going to get an answer which is equal to 1. So I get an answer equal to 1. And therefore, I don't know what to do. So the ratio test is no good at these two points here. Um, so what I need to do is actually put x equals 1 actually into my initial series. So when x equals 1, I'm going to have 1 plus 2, that's 3 over 3. And I put the values in like this. And then I work out the nth term, basically in terms of what happens when x is 1. So the nth term becomes 3 to the power n over 3n times by n. Okay, and the 3n's are going to cancel. So I end up with the un is equal to 1 over n. And then... I just use, here's where I use the idea from the p-series. I know that the sum from uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over n is divergent, so therefore I'm not going to include 1 in my boundary condition, so I'm not including the boundary of 1. And then I also need to test when n equals negative 5. So I put n equals negative 5 into this, uh, excuse me, when x is negative 5. When x is negative 5, I'm going to put x equals negative 5 into here. And then again, I'm see, see what happens. And if I put that, I'm going to get minus 3 over 3 times 1, plus, and this is going to go minus 3 squared over 3 squared times 2, etc., etc. Um, and again, I can work out the, the nth term from this, which is going to be minus 1 to the power n, because I'm going to get alternating positive and negative. 3 to the power n, all over 3n times n. Okay, so this is my, my sequence. And I can, again, simplify by cancelling out the 3 to the power n. And I get minus 1 to the power n over n. Okay. Um, and I can just 
see what happens with this one. And basically I've got, I've got this situation here. I've got uh, an alternating series because I've got the minus one to the power n. So this is going to keep alternating. And I also have bn plus one always less than bn. Okay, so as um, n increases, you know, the, the next term is always going to be smaller than the previous term. And also I've got this situation here. As n approaches infinity, this is going to get closer and closer to zero. So by the alternating series test, I have convergence for this. Okay, so I have convergence at this point. Therefore, my final answer, my interval of convergence, I include the negative 5 and I exclude the 1. So there we go. That is my interval of convergence.